Hey everybody, MS Farzan here, and welcome back to this video series on how to make a 2D multiplayer tabletop card game using Unity and Mirror. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about collaboration and deployment for your 2D tabletop games. Uh, I'm more going to provide advice here than I am going to show you how to do things, as there's many ways to go about doing these two things, and um, I think th they will depend very much on your use case scenario. But here are some ideas. Uh, first, in terms of collaboration, if you're working with other people on this project, probably you're already familiar with GitHub and how to set up a GitHub repository. And that is generally um, one of the tried and true ways of collaborating on a project. Um, Unity has its own uh, collaboration tool, which I'll show you in just a second. And I also have a, um, a, um, a brief video on using GitHub to structure your project. I think it, uh, if I recall correctly, it might be dealing with JavaScript and may not be your exact cup of tea, but it will give you a little bit of an overview of the tool and, and what it's used for if you haven't used GitHub before. Uh, in any case, it would be a great idea just to familiarize yourself with um, uh, the GitHub workflow and how to collaborate over it as it will it will uh, pay off in dividends over the course of your development career. If you want to use the Unity collaboration tool, which I, I, um, I haven't, I must caveat, I haven't used in a, um, uh, with others, I haven't like used it as a collaborative tool myself. It, um, I, what I use it for is basically just to back up my, uh, my information so that I can uh, save my uh, my work to the cloud and also work uh, on my laptop on my games and then come back to my desktop and um, uh, download it from the cloud and be able to to work in sync with what I'm doing on my laptop. It's pretty straightforward. You need to make sure that you have your Unity account set up and um, you can set up a, um, uh, uh, a collaboration by clicking on this button. Um, and when you go to this like little, it kind of looks like a, a sun sort of button, you need to um, set your project ID. And what this will do is uh, it will uh, uh, allow you to connect to your organization. I'm not going to go through all this stuff because I um, obviously some of it is, is going to be private, but um, you can select the organization that you're working with, which is, you know, if you're working uh, with a personal organization as I, I am here, you just select that and you uh, sync up the project ID. And uh, the important thing is that uh, uh, to note is that once you set up all of this on the back end, it's pretty easy to just see on your, um, on your, in your setup, for example, on your scripts or your prefabs, when some changes have been made to those scripts or uh, to those prefabs and who, um, who made them, it was probably you on your other computer. Um, and then, uh, you can use this collab button to just sync up. Uh, any changes or determine which changes you want to implement and where. Uh, pretty easy to use. Like I said, I use it just for my own uh, keeping up a, a, a remote repository for, for my work and saving stuff to the cloud and making sure my laptop and my desktop are in sync. Um, but it may be worth investigating whether or not it's the right collaborative option for you if you're working with other people or if GitHub or another um, service will do. In terms of deployment, I get asked a lot, how do you how do you actually make this game and publish it to the world? And the short answer is that it's complicated. Obviously, if you go ahead and you know, if you follow the Unity uh, uh, build workflow, you can build the game for anything. But the uh, for any platform, I should say, but the complex part of it is we need a development server here that is, um, or a production server, I should say, that um, is dedicated to uh, handling all of the backend work for us. Whereas up to this point in this video series, we've just been using uh, a server on our computer as a local host. You'll recall that when we go to our network manager here in our scene provided by a mirror and we click on the inspector we see uh, a bunch of information about the um, the network manager including the network info what transport we're using what's the network address 
um, and then we have um, uh, the port defined here. And so there's a, a few different things that, you know, a, a lot of, well, there's a few different things we can tinker in here. If we want to dig into the mirror documentation and mess with the scripts ourselves, we could do all types of custom stuff here. Um, so you can, as I'm, as I understand it, you can get a, a bit closer to the metal than we have with this um, this higher level API that they provide for us. Um, but all of this is running uh, here on our computer. How do we get that out in the world somewhere? Uh, well, okay, there's a couple things that we need to cover um, to get to get there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the the uh, mirror documentation to the server hosting um, uh, section. Uh, this is just if you go to the the uh, if you go to mirror and head to the documentation, you go to guides and then server hosting. They provided uh, some general information about how to host your server um, uh, either on AWS on Amazon or um, Google Cloud. Uh, they I think they will be uh, in the future uh, providing information on how to deploy to Microsoft Azure as well. And you can follow these steps uh, as well as I can in terms of how to deploy to AWS or Google Cloud. What I want to provide for you here is just a general overview of what you'd be doing. If we see here in the introduction to the, the guide, we see that there um, are a few possible ways to test your project. You could use the default build where the host uh, uh, um, and client are one and connect with another build or editor um, to the host locally on one computer. That's what we've been doing here uh, thus far. We've been uh, operating either by uh, um, using this one editor as the host and client A, where if I hit play and I click host, um, I see um, there's this is uh, we're playing as me, then I'm the host with client A. And then we've also been building the project. Well, let's actually just actually let's do that before we go to, to something else. Um, we'll build the project. Unless you followed my, my Peril Sync video before this one, which I hope you have, you've probably been doing it this way. And we're gonna have to get to Peril Sync anyway uh, in this video. So um, we'll build a project. And then as we do this, you've seen this probably a hundred times by now, if you've been following this series, we have a built version of the game. We have this editor version. The editor will be the host with client A, and then the built version will be client B, and we get to play our game. Uh, well, let me not do that just yet. Let me. Make sure to draw cards, play our game, and it and it just works, right? Now let me just stop the client here and stop the the game here. Actually, I'm going to need to restart the client. Um, so now when I um, play the game here, as we just did, and I still have this build running. Remember, well, I just briefly mentioned Peril Sync, and in a previous video, we uh, installed Peril Sync to help us manage multiple builds, which obviates the need for us to hit Control B and uh, have a separate build running. So what I have here is I have um, under my Clones Manager, I have uh, Clone Zero is running. So I'm going to bring that up here. Where is it? Clone Zero. I'm going to hit Play on this too. And what I'm going to do with Clone um, zero is I'm going to use it as another client. In fact, instead of using this built version, you could just have two clones uh, within Perils, Peril Sync, clone zero and clone one, and then you'd have your your regular working editor, and you'd have two clones running at the same time, maybe on three screens if you can <laughs> um, uh, manage to uh, cobble together that kind of setup. Um, so I'll go to my sample scene. I'll say that this is um, actually not a host. I'm just going to say this is the server. And then uh, in the built version of the game, we'll say that's client A. And in the clone zero, that's client B. Okay, so I have two clients and a server running. Server is my sample scene and then two clients. When I go to the first client, this is uh, the built version, client A. I'll hit draw cards. You'll notice that that now appears on 
uh, uh, client B, the clone version of the game. I'll draw the cards here on the clone version of the game, client B, and I see them on the on client A. I don't see them on the server because the, the, the server is just running everything in the back end for us. And when I draw a card here on the uh, on client A, uh, or when I drop a card, it appears in client B. When I drop a card in client B, it appears in client A. And we'll note that um, because client um, A is uh, being um, uh, uh, sorry, client B is being run in a uh, in the editor. I can also start seeing my if I you know wasn't maximized on play uh, in client B, I would be able to see all of my logs in the uh, the debugger, uh, which is really cool. Um, so and if I um, well, let's let's do this all again just so you can see that. Well, unplay this, unplay this as well, and we'll hit uh, maximize on play so that we're not maximizing on play. And now we'll hit play in what's going to be the server. And the clone. We'll hit play as well. And in the built version, which could just be another clone if you want it to be, we'll start that as client A. We'll make the clone as client B. Draw cards on both. Just drop a card for funsies. Okay. And we see in the console of client B that we're starting to to um, to debug the uh, to log the things to the debugger that we've we've wanted to whether or not it's being targeted by self how many times it's been clicked um, uh, something uh, let's see the I'm clicking you can't really see maybe you can hear that I'm clicking on client a I'm clicking one of client B's cards and it's showing up on on the the debugger and this would all work if you're running multiple clones as well that's that's super cool. So what's really really cool is that we've built this entire project with this uh, default build in mind with our host client relationship, which is kind of like a peer to peer setup, um, which means that you could um, have uh, have uh, two uh, clients connecting with one another, uh, where one of them is just going to be the host. Um, and then you also have this server uh, build where a server is a separate executable. executable. You basically run, um, like if you had an extra machine, you would run, uh, you would build the game as a server and then just like run it and tell it to be a server. Uh, and then other, uh, you would set it up so that other clients could connect to it from the internet. Um, and then, of course, you have the third option, which is probably the option that um, most people are going to eventually want to go with, called a dedicated server. Same as the server build, but placed on an external machine, you connect to it with the server's external IP, which is uh, what this article is going to show you how to do. You're going to build the game as a server, just as we've seen here, uh, or I should say similar to what we've seen here, where we have this um, original uh uh, game window or game editor working as a server and it's just going to sit on a computer in, in the cloud um, in on Amazon Web Services or uh, in Azure or uh, in the Google Cloud and it's going to wait for, <laughs> for um, uh, other computers, other clients to connect to it and then they will uh, manage accordingly. So the, uh, the point is that uh, this is heavily going to depend on your use case scenario, and you'll have to follow through on the the instructions here on AWS or Google Cloud or eventually, I suppose, Microsoft Azure. Um, but what's cool about that is one once that thing is up and running, you can connect to it from hopefully anywhere, and you know uh, people can download your game from elsewhere. They would run it as a client, uh, which you would specify in, in the way that your uh, your own game works and it would connect to the server and uh, and you know work just that way um, one other note is that you um, where am I I am in my sample scene um, if uh, if you need 
other ways to do things, like I've mentioned uh, in a previous video when we set up Mirror, you um, can check it out the examples here, like if you need to um, to check out how to do chat or um, discovery or like a room, uh, for example, uh, all of that is here for you to play with. Of course, there's stuff in the Mirror, mirror documentation, but uh, for my money, sometimes it's helpful to look at an actual example and um, uh, come up with my own solution by uh, tinkering as I need and see fit. So I hope this has been helpful for you uh, in uh, figuring out uh, maybe just some ideas, generating some ideas of, of how to go about collaboration and deployment. Uh, if it has, please be sure to like this video and subs subscribe to my channel for more. You can also follow me on Twitter and I would just love for you to check out my books and games by going to nightpathpub.com or just checking out the link that I've, I've included in the description of this video and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.